most famous medicine of peach is for nausea, specifically in pregnancy. So that that's probably what like overall, maybe peach is best known for as an herbal medicine is for preventing morning sickness. Hello and welcome to the Herbs with Rosalie podcast, a show exploring how herbs heal as medicine, as food, and through nature connection. I'm your host, Rosalie de la Forêt. I created this YouTube channel to share trusted herbal wisdom so that you can get the best results when relying on herbs for your health. I love offering up practical knowledge to help you dive deeper into the world of medicinal plants and seasonal living. Each episode of the Herbs with Rosalie podcast is shared on YouTube as well as your favorite podcast app. Transcripts and recipes for each episode can be found at herbswithrosaliepodcast.com or through the link in the video description. Also in the video description, you'll find other helpful resources. For example, to get my best herbal tips, as well as fun bonuses, be sure to sign up for my weekly herbal newsletter. Okay, grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. Robin is such a delight to spend time with, and so it's really perfect that she chose such a delightful herb to share with us. Peaches are loved as food, yet it's also some of our best cooling and relaxing herbal medicines. After this episode, you'll never look at peaches the same. For those of you who don't know her already, Robin Rose Bennett is a storyteller, writer, and herbalist. She has been offering classes in Wise Woman Healing Ways, herbal medicine, and earth spirit teachings since 1986 at herb conferences, festivals, clinics, medical, and nursing schools, and most joyously, outside with the plants. Robin Rose shares herbal medicine with gratitude for the loving generosity of the plants and the magic, mystery, and beauty of the web of life. She is on the faculty of the New York Open Center and the Arbor Vitae School of Traditional Herbalism and is the author of two meditation mp3s and the books Healing Magic, A Green Witch Guidebook to Conscious Living and The Gift of Healing Herbs, Plant Medicines and Home Remedies for a Vibrantly Healthy Life. You can find more from Robin at robinrosebennett.com. Welcome to the podcast, Robin. I'm so excited to have you here today. Oh, thank you. I'm thrilled to be here with you, Rosalie. Oh, well, we've had this scheduled in the books for a while now. So it's been something on the horizon I've had a chance to look forward to. And mm. then in the past today and yesterday, it was like my happy thought that kept popping into my mind. Oh, I get to hang out with Robin soon. So oh, you're so sweet. Me too. Me too. Really been looking forward to this. And here we are. The day has come. The day has come. The day yeah. has come. Mm hmm. Well, let's begin by hearing a little bit about your herbal path and what brought you to the world of plants. Okay. So I was um, for years as a, as a quite a young woman, um, like in my teens, really deeply involved in spiritual studies mm -hmm. and spiritual studies that were uh, guided by two very special teachers that I happened to be lucky enough to meet. And after perhaps 10 years with them, I began to see that these beautiful concepts needed to be grounded in day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day reality mm -hmm. to really help people, including me, shift patterns. Otherwise, we can get like really wise and smart in our heads and not be applying it. So that coupled with uh, looking for answers to health challenges that mm -hmm. conventional medicine didn't have answers for for me brought um, these two worlds together. And that still is my kind of the essence of my approach to herbalism is as a spiritual path. This, this mm -hmm. path of reconnection with the earth is, you know, it's about our evolution. It's, it's not only about healing our headache or our bellyache or our, mm -hmm. or our serious disease. It's about who are we becoming? Mm -hmm. well, that's interesting to hear that that's kind of those two are woven together for you so early on the spiritual mm -hmm. healing as well as this you know herbal healing as well and yeah. you were teaching um by the late 80s yep and i was kind of curious what differences do you notice between 
then and now <laughs> if there's a couple well, come to it's, mind. It, it's, yeah, it's night, it's night and day, at least on the East Coast where I am, right? Because I think herbal medicine maybe already had a little bit more of a foothold on the West Coast, you know, California and mm -hmm. such, but not here. And, um, you know, Rosalie, I remember, so this is a really fun memory. I remember watching television and seeing an ad for a pharmaceutical, um, maybe I think it was an allergy medicine, maybe something like that, like for a cold. And, you know, in the world of advertising, nothing is by accident, right? Nothing. So at the very end of the commercial, the woman is either opening or closing her medicine chest to get the, you know, the drug or put it away. And on the bottom shelf were some tinctures, some herbal hmm. tinctures. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, look at this. It was just, just like they were beginning to acknowledge. And so, of course, now, what are we talking? Multi-billion dollar industry, mm -hmm. herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. um, even the first herbs that I bought and used, I wouldn't, I would turn my nose up at them today. And yet the herb, I mean, they were so poorly made. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were commercial in the stores, you know, in the health food or the herb shop. But um, but you know what? They worked enough, even poorly done. They worked enough to kind of keep me, you know, going. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if I took something for menstrual cramps and it actually made me more comfortable. This caught my attention. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So um, but this the familiarity of people with plant medicine, the mm -hmm. commercialization, which is the downside of it. Um, those are some of the big differences. And of course, of course, the plethora of amazing new generations of herbalists like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. There was, there was not that there was not the internet. There was not like a young, younger generations of herbalists. So I had like kind of one, at least in the States, right? One generation of herbalists, like kind of, that seemed like for me, in my mind anyway, they're before me right? The slightly older generation of herbalists, never dreaming that one day I'd be an elder in the community, right? Um, who thinks that when you're, you know, 25 and 30? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that too, like that. So, so there was, you know, like kind of one generation to turn to unless you had like a, you know, like you're you feel it's like you have the Appalachian tradition or this you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. as it turned out, I learned after I had been an herbalist for a decade that I had a grand, great grandmother who was an herbalist. Oh, had really? No idea. Hmm. I had no idea. And she was apparently a, quite a renowned herbalist hmm. in Brooklyn, New York. And wow. when I learned about her, my uncle was dying and I had made a late, late in life connection to him. And I would come in with herbal steams and things like mm -hmm. that. And he began to open up to me in that time. And that's when he told me about my great grandmother, Esther. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I said, Oh, so you mean like she helped the family and she would help? He said, Oh, no, oh, no, people would line up to, to see her. Mm -hmm. So I had always thought my heritage as an herbalist was spiritual and past life and this, but it was actually in this life as well, you know, through my mm -hmm. mother line. So that mm -hmm. was very, um, that's a, a field of your original question, but that was a really fun, affirming thing to discover. And so thank you, mm -hmm. Esther. Mm -hmm. I love that. I just, I don't have that in my family line. So I just try to, you know, I just imagine it in there. <laughs> How wonderful to have that. that my, <laughs> and my suspicion is you probably do. Probably one, do one of the somewhere. ancestors that you don't mm -hmm. know about. Cause, yeah. Because I've just found this to be true that we always have some kindred like someone who's really kindred with us in our line. And that can be good, especially if we have family, you know, really difficult family um, history to think mm -hmm. that there is one kin mm -hmm. who's kind of walks with us and, yeah. and you know, helps us in our life yeah. on the scene. Yeah. Thank you for that, Robin. You're welcome. Well, I'm very excited to talk a very summary herb potentially summary herb and that's peach. Yeah. I'm so excited that you chose peach. I'm excited to hear what you're going to say about peach. I love, love peach. So of course, you know, like you, I, I, it's all about embodying, right? The plants. And so earlier today I made a peach infusion, mm -hmm. which I've now poured into my cup. So I'm going to take a sip. So I'm like, I am peach as I speak for peach. Mm. 
Mm. Definitely get all peachy. I'll get peachy. Also, it's, um, as I mentioned before we came on, it's 95 degrees here. So peach is perfect because peach is cooling. Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. That, wait. Oh, this infusion makes you, it just makes you go, ah. Mm -hmm. You have to tell us what's in there, Robin. Oh, it, it's a peach pits and water. So mm. this is, I made this one in a quart jar with 13 dried peach pits from last year. Mm. Boiling water, filled it to the top. And I did it about maybe five hours ago. If I let it sit a little longer, it's going to be even peachier. So just imagine biting into a perfect, sweet, juicy mm. peach. And the infusion tastes like that. Mm. And you know what? I have a I have a poem of peach. Maybe is this a good time for me this to share it? Time. Yeah, please read. The okay. Peach poem. So here's here's what peach said. And peach is Prunus persica. Prunus persica, originally from Persia, which is now called Iran. Right? Peach. I'm sweet, juicy, cooling, and moist relaxing nerves and tissue. I help you when you're not content. In fact, I like to kiss you. I allay severe nausea. That is one of my great gifts, especially in pregnancy. Use my flowers, leaves, or pits. I am such a beautiful tree and I support your liver. My fuzzy fruits round and luscious. Your life flows like a river. Hmm. Oh, I love that. So I want to mention that that is from your book, The Gift of Healing Herbs. This is such a gem of a book. You can see it's a thick book. There's so much wisdom in here, as well as poems. So mm -hmm. I love your line. In fact, I love to kiss you. That just instantly made me think of my summers that I would spend in Texas and I'd go with my papa to the orchards or we'd, you know, we'd harvest the peaches mm. ourselves and they'd be big Texas peaches. You know, they're so mm. big. And then right there in the field, we would, you know, bend over and yeah, and just that is such a like kiss of the peach fruit. And then of course the just the juice, you know, the the juice everywhere. It's a juicy kiss. Yeah. But it, it, I swear it, it, I have not had peaches that good since I was a kid in, in Texas. Ah, so come visit me because this is one of the crops New Jersey is known for. Mm. And um, you know, in in a in um, you know, an honoring of uh, both of our our uh, commitment to bioregional herbalism whenever possible, I thought, well, peach, right? It's a, New Jersey peaches are famous. Mm. So um, we have some really good peaches here. If you come visit, I will share. Uh, in fact, you know, last summer I froze a whole lot of peaches. Mm -hmm. I just sliced them up. I laid them out like on cookie sheets and put them in the freezer. So this winter I make my oatmeal. I put my fresh summer peaches in. It's so lovely. Oh, I love my that. We do the same thing. Yeah, we freeze those up. We also make a lot of peach butter where we just cook them down in a crock pot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and our, cause our peaches from our yard are not yeah. super they're not super sweet. And so when we, that's kind of how we do it is we just cook them down, cook them down until it's this really thick peach butter and then mm. eat that all winter. Oh, peaches in winter is such a marvelous. It's such a treat. It's yeah. such a total treat. And if you combine it with something like warming, you know, it's nice, right? Because peach is so, so here's the thing about peach. It's wonderful. I, there's many wonderful things, right? Peach is energetically is cooling, Right, which anybody who's ever eaten a peach, right, you know this, right? Peach is cooling, it's moistening, right? There's that juiciness of it. It is um, a pretty profound herb to help with hot irritation in the mind, heart, and body. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it has an affinity for um, the upper GI. So it can also help with hot conditions in the um, in the gut, in the digestive tract. I know Kiva Rose recommends it for diarrhea, um, which is sort of maybe seems counterintuitive, right? Because it's moistening, but it's sort of um, it's somewhat of a modulating herb, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think what she said was diarrhea with fast transit time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to modulate that. 
uh, I have found it for all stages of hormonal shifting, mm -hmm. an excellent medicine. And here's like some of my favorite ways to use it for medicine is, um, I guess my all time favorite is actually the pits. That sounds so weird, right? It's the pit. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I used to joke that when I was going through menopause, my partner was like, oh, I'm so grateful to peach pit tincture. Uh, he, was, <laughs> he was alluding to my irritability, right? So uh, fair, fair enough, you know? And, and I had that tendency anyway, like being a fiery sag, like to, I move easily to that irritation impatient place. And I mean, herbs and my practices, of course, and being in nature have really shifted. I, so I won't say it's not my tendency, but I don't jump there as readily. And if like today, it's so easy, right, to get really agitated and hot under the collar with so many good reasons, right? You're paying attention to what's going on in the world because, you know, these days for me, I frame everything inside of that we are in a threshold. We are in a threshold moment when the old is transforming to the new. It's mm -hmm. a very uncomfortable, chaotic place to be. But if we have that bigger framework, it can be very hopeful mm -hmm. as opposed to like, ah, you know. Um, so with all of the things that challenge our nervous system. So for me, peach primarily is a nervine. I love peach pit in tinctured in brandy. I love peach pit tinctured in vodka. I love peach pit, pit infused in boiling water. Um, the recipe that I shared, is this, is this a good time to mention the peach oxymel? Well, let's mention that in just a second, because I okay. just want to um, address something, because I bet there's someone out there right now thinking, aren't peach pits toxic? Yeah, yeah, I figured we'd get to that. And I was going to do a whole bunch of facts and figures, but I decided not to. What I'm going to say is this. Um, the First of all, when people say that they contain peaches and peach bits contain cyanide, that is incorrect, right? They contain glycosides that can be converted into cyanide. It is not the same thing, right? Like the same way plants don't have hormones, they have, they have properties that can be converted. So among the many things for us to consider is the way that boiling water inactivates those cardiac glycosides, right? So makes them, even any potential towards toxicity, it nullifies that. Secondly, there's such a small amount in there that it is negligible. Now I take the precaution. So this is an interesting, like how herbalists do everything different, right? From one another. I always take the precaution and I've always told, oh, oh, wait, one other thing though about the, the potential toxic question. So one of the things that is being referred to here, in, and I'm not a chemist, right? So this is just me doing my homework, is called prussic or prussic, P-R-U-S-S-I-C, prussic acid, right? So prussic acid in order to harm us needs to be fermented. So as long as we're not fermenting our peach products, they're fine. So I started to say, I always take the precaution myself of, I don't use unbroken pits. I use whole pits. But as I was getting ready for the podcast, Rosalie, I started doing some, you know, just looking around research. And I found that it's an esteem, the, the inside, right? The seeds inside the pits are esteemed in Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. right? So those, even the part that I don't use, they use. So, um, so the short answer is no, they're not toxic. And Phew. those are some. All right, let's go make our peach pit infusions then. <laughs> so. Let's go make our peach pit infusions. Or like, here's a totally, this is, um, all right, well, you guide me. Uh, you tell me, I can talk some more about other parts of peach. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you brought up your recipe. So let's dive into your recipe because I'm pretty excited for this. Okay. And by the way, I think the card you made is so wonderful. Or, oh, or so your yeah. For your assistant made it. It's adorable. Listeners and watchers don't know yet, but we made a very ah. special recipe card. You you were the first one that we've done this for, and we're looking to. Oh, lucky it. me. Yeah. So Tatiana is a beautiful botanical illustrator, and she took Robin's 
recipe and made a, a beautiful painting out of it. So, which will be on your recipe card that you can download. Tell her thank you for me because I, I saw it and I was like, wow, that's gorgeous. So the recipe that we're talking about, and here's um, for those who are watching this as opposed to just listening, I'm holding up a jar of this peach oxymel, right? And this is a big, big honey jar full of peach oxymel. And you can tell a lot of it is gone and it's not mm -hmm. the first jar I've gone through either. And as it says on the recipe card, this is very simple. It's just chopped up fresh peaches with apple cider vinegar and honey. And I give you my measurements for roughly two thirds vinegar and one third honey, but you'll make it to your taste. There's no right or wrong. And this, you know, I always use this like um, in salad dressings, things like that. But I was serving it to my apprentices one day and I saw they were just pouring it in their cups and drinking it and chewing the, the peaches. So I was like, okay, I'll try that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that really is a super great just to drink. And then another student um, did something I would never have thought to do. She added it to sauerkraut. Well, now I do that frequently because the combination of the sour and the sweet and the tang of the vinegar and the honey is just, hmm, hmm. I used to say it's divine. It's not divine, it's earthly. <laughs> it's marvelously earthly. Oh, that sounds lovely. It's just a beautiful, beautiful um, remedy with the fresh peaches, right? Because mm -hmm. even in that form, it's still going to calm your digestion, calm your nervous system. Um, you know, how I very, very first, let's go back to like 1985, how I very first learned about using peach pits at all was from our beloved herbal friend, Kate Gilday of Woodland Essence. Mm -hmm. So in those days, Rosalie, we didn't have conferences yet, right? We didn't have the internet yet. So we would meet in very small groups, like Earth Sisters, we called ourselves, mm -hmm. and we would taste things and, and share impressions and like mm -hmm. that, right? So it was really kind of fabulously fun. And I remember Kate one day coming in and saying, oh, I make you know, for kids when they need um, like antibiotic sort of herbal medicine, I give them peach pit uh, infusion hmm. because it tastes really good and it strengthens the liver. Hmm. So like I wouldn't use it in some any kind of condition. Like I just went through tick-borne healing from tick-borne infection. Hmm. I'm not going to use it there or in blood diseases where sugar can feed that kind of parasitic I think of all those things as not literally parasites, but they're like a parasitic invasion in the body. I don't use sugar things for that. Mm -hmm. But for everything else where you need to strengthen your immune system, what a delightful way to do it, right? Yeah. And, um, and uh, now a lot of people use, uh, like a lot of people use um, leaf and twig. And I have definitely dried peach leaves and twigs and use them uh, for, you know, for teas uh, and tinctures. But I have to say my favorite is, is for delight and joy mm -hmm. is the peaches and the peach pits. Mm -hmm. um, they're most famous. So, but every part will work. They are interchangeable. So most famous, probably like I say for me, peaches and Irvine, that's my first choice use of this plant. Um, this and I have two trees that volunteered on my land, so <laughs> they're they're not pretty. They're they're like spindly, and oh my god, they put out hundreds of peaches though. It's, wow. they're, they're so generous, and the bears have have wreaked havoc on these trees too, and so now they kind of put them out every two years. They're like we need a break from the bear coming and jumping on us and pulling down branches. Um, but the most famous medicine of peach is for nausea specifically in pregnancy. So that that's probably what like overall, maybe peach is best known for as an herbal medicine is for um, preventing morning sickness, mm -hmm. right? Some, uh, I think, was it Tommy Bass said, or somebody said, you know, even better than ginger, I would mm -hmm. say maybe, maybe mix them, you know, maybe mix them. And I do want to share about one particular recipe that I have in the gift of healing herbs um, because I was doing a weed walk yesterday and this young man um, bought a book after the walk and he opened right to that recipe 
And I love that sort of thing. So I decided that that meant I was supposed to share that recipe uh, with everybody who's listening today. That sounds so, right. Yeah. I learned there's a word for that, bibliomancy, when you just open the book to whatever. And of course, I want you to know, I, I carefully marked it and now it's hiding. I carefully <laughs> marked it. I really did. Okay. So I wanted to share uh, about this recipe that he opened right to, and he's a new dad. His little baby was with him and his wife. So that feels relevant right to the, um, you know, not getting a lot of sleep, being maybe a little aggravated. So it's one part flowering tops of motherwort with one part peach pits, leaves, twigs, or flowers. And um, I think of this as a bittersweet blend, right? Because the motherwort is bitter, a bitter mint, and the peach is so sweet and soothing. So they're both soothing, but in different ways. And you know where I think of this blend and blends like this that I like to make is for those, for helping us to physically and emotionally digest the bittersweet experiences in our life, mm -hmm. right? Or bittersweet, yeah, just, you know, like maybe we're, I don't know, just an example that came to my mind is maybe we're moving and we're so excited that we're going, you know, to the new home, whatever, but there's a bittersweet because we're leaving behind, you know, people and places and plants and trees that we love where we are. So the, yeah, or even like something like, you know, uh, a lot of people have a bittersweet response to aging. Mm hmm right? Like, oh, I'm getting old. Uh. I, I have, um, that's where my Sag fire comes in. I have little patience for that because I think we're so lucky if we get to live mm -hmm. another day and another month and another year and a, you know, um, so peach helps you take delight hmm. in life, you know, and, and the, the, so the mother word is more kind of the soothing, calming, and the peach is more the uplifting, expanding kind of um, delight, just like mm. eating that Texas peach. Mm, I was just thinking of that, Robin. I love that. And just how you're referencing working with herbs as kind of partners and companions as we move through different you know, areas of our life and different emotions. You know, we don't have to have a diagnosed disease in order to turn to herbs. It can really, we can turn to them for delight. And I love that. Yes, definitely. Delight, cooling, support. You know, to me, the medicine is emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual always. And we might be focused on one aspect, um, surely, right? But that doesn't mean it's not influencing all those other aspects as well. Um, again, like the, like when I was using it in going through menopausal transition, it was helping with the hormonal uh, shifts, right? And it was also emotionally, you know, calming, emotionally soothing. And then for, um, for a really fun way, here's another jar I'm going to hold up for people who are watching. So this jar of peaches are, of fresh peaches are infusing in, it's a cordial. So they're infusing mm -hmm. in brandy and honey. And, no. you know, I'm thinking that if I'm a really nice herbalist, I'm going to bring this to my summer solstice ritual and share mm -hmm. that with everybody. Because what a great celebratory drink. And maybe I'll bring the vinegar for anybody who doesn't want to consume alcohol. There we go. <laughs> right. So so there's, you know, just wonderful. And then I was reading in, do you know, Natalie Vickery, family herbalist? Yes, I do know Natalie. Yeah. So I was looking, she has a lovely um, write up on peach in her blog hmm. that people might want to check out. Uh, but she said for her stomach upsets, it really worked like a charm for stomach upsets. And, um, and then all of us say, you know, it's things where the irritability might show up in like red skin a uh, red tongue, um, you know, red, red. Oh, which reminds me, I had a friend. I have a friend. She's moved now. Bittersweet. Um, I have a friend who has severe bee sting allergies and she is a beekeeper. Huh? So mm -hmm. one day she called and she was stung. So they were waiting for an ambulance to come. And I had her 
uh, I think I was close by and just ran over, right? So we gave her a bunch of peach medicine to drink and poulticed where she had been stung with peach leaves. Hmm. By the time the ambulance came, she was breathing. She hmm. still went to the hospital. She went to get checked out. I mean, this is a person you who know, had her, her, you know, uh, her pen, her ep epinephrine pen, right? But, but the uh, difference that the herbs made, which she told everyone about afterwards, you know, was remarkable. Mm. And, you know, she was a student, right? But she didn't really like get how powerful herbs can be in an emergency, much less. And as you were saying, like the, the most important thing, right, of, of the everyday kind of weaving it in to our lives. Um, but in emergency, right, that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty great. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I can't remember who I learned that from years ago, but I also have a dear friend who's a beekeeper and she doesn't have severe reactions, but she does get stung a lot. She often doesn't wear gloves and, um, mm -hmm. but you know, the stings do bother her. And so I give her a combination of fresh plantain and peach tincture, the combination of those. And, oh, and nice. Um, yeah. She just asked for a refill actually last week. So I need to get on that. Smart woman. <laughs> so that's a beautiful combination. I like that, right? Peach and plantain, right? Cause both of them are so brilliant for, eruptive skin conditions. Mm -hmm. You know what else it's making me think of is how about elderflower in there? Ooh. That could also be really, yeah. a really helpful um, thing. Like I use that a lot for measles and, and mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and kind of, of releasing the exterior, getting, letting, allowing things to move out. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, Kiva um, Rose, who also has written beautifully about peach medicine, mm -hmm. um, she said to let's see, I made a little note of it. She likes it with it's almost kind of like my peach motherwort remedy. She had one where she says uh, peach and burdock hmm. together, which I would think would also be. She's like using it like an alternative, an hmm, alternative. And if people don't know that expression, because it's a little bit of an older fashioned herbal word, an alternative is an herb that's given to essentially alter a long standing chronic kind of condition in the body like maybe it would be eczema or or even even psoriasis because um a number of herbalists have mentioned to me i don't have i don't maybe i have you know i've done this so long sometimes i forget what i have experiences with <laughs> but um a number of herbalists have mentioned using it in oh well of course allergies autoimmune right autoimmune conditions right that's an allergy is an overreactive Thing, right. So there, that would be another like alternative use, right, of peach medicine, like hyperimmunity. So it's a, again a modulating herb for the immune system, not a stimulant. Um, and it's very demulcent. So that would mean too, it could be helpful for like heat in the, um, you know, urinary system. Like if someone's mm -hmm. prone to UTIs, maybe peach or peach mixed with corn silk or marshmallow. Okay, now I'm just throwing them out there at something <laughs> I've tried, but I'm just, you know, thinking. So calming, modulating, anti-irritant, fills us with delight. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> of good, a lot of good things in that beautiful, delicious peach. That is. Thank you so much for sharing about peach medicine, Robin. Well, I'm really excited to hear about the projects you're working on because you mm. have books coming out and also, well, I don't want to, you tell us, but I'm really excited for this. Okay. I just thought of one other great peach thing. So maybe we'll get back to it. Okay. But um, okay. yeah, so projects, projects. So I have a number of books in the works of getting them out into the world. I am very excited about a novel that I wrote um, that is completed and I am submitting it and waiting to find the perfect match or the perfect agent or the perfect publisher, because this is a book that is, um, of course, it's got herbs and herbalists and witches, oh my, in it, but it's, it's, a, it's a healing medicine story in the mm. form of like a thrilling page turner. Wow. I'm so yeah. excited. I read a yeah. lot of fiction. So when I saw that you'd written a novel, first of all, congrats, because that is no small thing to write a novel. I'm yep. really excited for this. 
I am too. I, I like, I literally, I so can't wait to get this in the world and people reading it. My first readers have given gorgeous reviews and I'm basically mm -hmm. kind of giving it to one person at a time to read, even while I'm waiting for a publisher, because I just want its energy out in the world because it is, yeah. it's a really healing story and it doesn't skirt the darkness. It goes deep in and comes out the other side, which is it's, mm -hmm. it's right where we are. And I can't wait to get started on my next novel. So oh, that's, that's where I'm yeah. at. But I've yeah. also completed um, a book that uh, is just my illustrator is just finishing up, but it's all written. And it's a pocketbook um, that I'm calling a Green Witch's Pocketbook of Wisdom. And so it's like a four by six with beautiful illustrations. So the pocketbook of wisdom, I one of the things, because I like like to keep a little book like that by my bed and just open it every day and just see what I open to a piece of wisdom, which, as I mentioned earlier, I learned has the name Bibliomancy, which I, I didn't know that. But that's how I've been using this book. And every time I have like a client or even I'm talking to a friend class, I open the book and see what's the message for. So, of course, I did that for us for today. Ooh. And I want to share with you the page I opened to. And so each, each page is like one line and then a little bit of explanatory text. So here's the page I open to for your podcast, for our gathering. Mm -hmm. There is only now and it is alive with infinite possibility. Oh, Robin, I love that. Thank I feel you. like and I want to hear that before every single podcast I do from now on. Awesome. So true. <laughs> and then the, the little explanation under is open to the magic of this moment as it comes to be. Let it go as it passes away. Be present to the next moment that arises. The past can only be the past when we let it go. Hmm. Oh, well, now I'm really excited about two books that you have coming out. Are you ready for the third? <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. Okay, so the third one is very exciting. is um, is a young version of my book, Healing Magic. So it's oh, the Young Green Witch's Guide to Herbal Medicine. Oh, wonderful! Oh my gosh, I can already think of five people that I want to give this to, and I haven't even heard that much about it yet. So. <laughs> wonderful. So I have. I'm very fortunate. I have a wonderful um, editor and publisher for that one, who's over the moon excited about the project, which is worth its weight in gold. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that one, the other two are written and I'm looking to, you know, to get them out. This one I'm writing now. Oh, wow. That is so yeah. exciting. That's a lot of writing, Robin. <laughs> yeah. Well, writing is really my first love. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been teaching now for 35 years and I've, I've taught, you know, I have so many wonderful um, herbalists now that I've taught who are, who are teaching and have shops or have schools or have apprenticeships or the la 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 la. And it's not that I'm um, not excited about teaching still. I mean, you know this too, right? Even though from a younger place, one of the great things about the herbal world is like it keeps our curiosity and our wonder and our passion alive and kind of refreshing all the time, right? We're always mm -hmm. learning and excited. And um, so I always say, the, I wonder who I'm going to be as an herbalist when I grow up, because I feel like I, there's just, I've done so many different aspects of herbalism, and I know there are more to come. Like you said, there's just a continual unfolding of, of herbalism. Now, I'm excited to see what kind of herbalist you're going to be as you as you become an elder and elder and elder and elder. That's, that's very wonderful. I mean, I know you'll always be um, connecting people with, with the earth, with the plants, which is really essential. Um, and I thank you for all that you do and you write and you share because you really are doing beautiful work in the world by being who you are. Just be, And that's what all any of us is really mm -hmm. here to do is to become who we are. And so a whole unexpected side benefit of studying plants for me has been they know who they are. And as I have embody them and take them into me in all these different forms they've helped me know who I am hmm. and hmm. it's not just me I see it with all my students you know and all the apprentices everybody kind of comes into being who they are and it's beautiful mm -hmm. that and is it, so beautiful I feel so lucky that we get to to work with plants in, in that way me as well
Me definitely as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, before we head on to the last question that I'm asking everybody in season four, you mentioned that there was some more peachy things and I don't want to miss anything peachy. Okay. So this is, this is a fun one to share. Thank you for coming, circling back to that. So some of the legends, especially from China about peach is that the peach tree is the tree of immortality. Hmm. And there are also legends about motherwort being a plant of immortality in, this is in China. And so I've thought about this, and I think that these stories about the plants, so, so the, the peach tree story is that there is a sacred peach tree that, you know, is 3,000 years old, and this tree blooms every 1,000 years, right? And so it, you know, and when you, if you can have a peach from that um, blooming, right, when that flower becomes the peach, right, then you become immortal. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, my thought about this is, maybe these stories about immortality are um, like, these are the plants that would make you want to live longer, right? Because both motherwort and peach, right? They're calming, they're soothing, they help you go with the flow, they help you, you know? So then, then yeah, sure, sure, I'll live longer because uh, I'm happy. So that's my perspective on it, but that's the legend, right? The tree of immortality, um, juicy and delicious. Mm, I love it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Well, a final question I have for you, Robin, is what do you wish you had known when you first started working with herbs that you now know? Mm. I wish that I had learned how to tend plants first. Mm. So mm. I, you know, I grew up as an herbalist, as a wild crafter in Manhattan um, and elsewhere, of course, when I would, could get out, right? But I didn't know about how to tend plants. I didn't know how to garden. And I think that's backwards. So mm -hmm. if, I, if I had my druthers, I would learn first how to take care of these beings that are taking care of me. Hmm. Um, you know, rather than just, again, learning. And I, I'm grateful that I learned, you know, ethical wild crafting, good conscientious ways to harvest and gather. And I, to this day, still really primarily focus on weeds and harvesting mm -hmm. the super abundant, you know, wild um, plants that gardeners go like, oh, you want to take that out of my garden? Sure. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Thank you. Um, and even in the city parks, they're like, yeah, okay. You know, sure. Go for it. Right. So I do wish I had um, I wish I had known how to garden. So I've uh, now I'm a gardener and I and I love that. Right. But I think that it's important to know how to take care of the plants and not just ask, uh, you know, for them to give themselves to us. Mm -hmm. I also was somewhat taught to be biased against certain kinds of information that was old. Like old white men read that wrote that, so don't read that. And and I I wish that I hadn't. I had to undo that. Like because there's mm -hmm. super valuable information, right? Maybe different approaches, mm -hmm. maybe more heroic or what have you. But uh, it's not good to shut off streams of valuable information, especially from mm -hmm. people where it was with people who had empirical experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we start with. We start with what we're taught and then we find our own, you know, streams. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing those with us because that's that's really three <laughs> in some ways. Gardening or tending of the plants being so important. Um, not leaving, letting go of our biases in order to just take in information. Mm -hmm. I like what you just said, too, is that um, we do make our own way in herbalism. So where we begin is not necessarily where we end up and it's forever exactly. unraveling. Exactly. We can all learn to, you know, take the best that our teachers offer, leave what doesn't work for us. The same for my students, you know, or yours, you're studying with me, you know, take what works for you, leave the rest. Um, none of us is, you know, coming from any place of perfection. We're, we're you know, ideally, we're coming from a place of being real. You know, with what we do and what we care about. The one other thing that I feel is really important is that I do still most value 
the information that comes to me from traditional herbalism, from people who have worked with the plants, with people. So I'm not dissing science, but if I have to choose, I'm going to go with, you know, what this African-American granny midwife tells me has worked with the women. Like I've literally read in a book, oh, motherwork, it doesn't do anything. Like hmm. the, sci the science shows it doesn't like really. Right. Um, no. So, so I, that I was taught from the beginning was to look to people who have actual experience with plants mm -hmm. and people or animals or, you know, the people are more than humans. Um, and I still feel that's super valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so true, Robin. Well, yeah. this has been a delightful conversation about peach. I'm very excited about peach pit medicine. That's not something I've worked with as much. I've done more twigs and leaves which is just kind of harder to source. I more easily get peach pits. So I'm excited for the abundance of peach pits coming my way this summer. Would you like and a little a little tip on, on drying them? Please, yes. Yeah, yeah. So so the easiest, there are there's two kinds of peaches, some that fall away from the, there's names for them, which I can't remember right now, but there's ones that fall away more easily from mm -hmm. the pit. But mm -hmm. regardless, the easiest thing to do is just gnaw on those pits until you get almost all the plant matter off. And mm -hmm. then I just li line them up whole, like on my windowsill. And mm -hmm. they dry beautifully. And don't put them away to store until they're totally dry. And though I store 95% of my plant medicines in my dry herbs in bags, paper bags, peach pits definitely last better in glass. Okay. So, so dry them, gnaw them to get off as much fruit as you can dry them somewhere, you know, just lay them out. They dry pretty easily. And if you want to make the tinctures with them, you might want to experiment with doing it with fresh or dried, or I kind of do it right down the middle, like maybe just dry it for a day hmm. and then, and then tincture them again whole. And that's too for anybody else listening. Yeah. Tincture them whole and it's delicious medicine. Wonderful. I think there's a lot of us going to be making some peach medicine, whether it's the peach oxymel or peach pit tincture or any number of things. Your peach infusion. I'm also excited for that. So oh, yeah. it's been so peachy. <laughs> it's been positively peachy being positively. with you. And I like peach. I like to kiss. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> sending a kiss across the line. Mm. Thank you so much, Robin. It's been such a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate you. Thanks, Robin. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the link in the video description to get free access to Robin's instructions for peach oxymel. This is a gorgeous recipe card. You don't want to miss it. Also available are the complete show notes, including the transcript. You can also find Robin at robinrosebennett.com. If you enjoyed this interview, then before you go, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get my new videos, including interviews like this. I'd also love to hear your comments about this interview and this delightful plant. I deeply believe that this world needs more herbalists and plant-centered folks. I'm so glad you're here as part of this herbal community. Have a beautiful day.